As you know, the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth Fibonacci number over the n minus first Fibonacci number is equal to the golden ratio. What we're gonna look at today is what, what is the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth Lucas polynomial over the n minus first Lucas polynomial. And if you haven't watched my latest video on the Lucas polynomials, you should watch that first so you're caught up with uh, the polynomials. But in the main idea is they generalize the Fibonacci numbers. Okay, so let's just get a quick little recap on the Lucas polynomials before we start tackling this problem. So the zeroth Lucas polynomial is zero. The first Lucas polynomial was one. And then for n greater than or equal to two, we had the nth Lucas polynomial was equal to x times the n minus first plus y times the n minus second. All right, and so if we plugged in x equals one and y equals one, we get exactly the Fibonacci numbers. Okay, and so let's call this limit L of xy, or just L for short, right? Because it's gonna depend on our choice of x and y. And hopefully at the end, when we get a formula, if we plug in x equals one and y equals one, we should end up with the golden ratio. And just as a reminder, that's equal to one plus the square root of five over two. Okay, so let's see if we could figure out L. L is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of bracket n over bracket n minus one. Well, bracket n is x bracket n minus one plus y bracket n minus two. And it's all over bracket n minus one. Okay, and so we could take this fraction and we'll break it up. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of x bracket n minus one over bracket n minus one, that's just x, plus y times bracket n minus two over bracket n minus one. Right, but this quantity here is just the reciprocal of this fraction. I mean, sure, our n's are off by one, but since we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity, it doesn't really matter. So this is just one over L here. So L is equal to x plus y over L. And so we could write L as a continuous fraction. So it's x plus y over x plus y over x plus y over and so forth. Right, and again, if you plug in x equals one and y equals one, we get the golden ratio, which would just be one plus one over one plus one over, right? And you've all seen that before. Here's another one for you before we get to some more interesting things. If we plug in x equals two and y equals negative one, what sequence are we gonna get? Well, well we start with zero, one. We go two times one minus zero, that's two. Okay, what's the next term? Two times two, which is four, minus one. That's three. Okay, what's the next term? Two times three, which is six, minus two, gives us four. Okay, maybe you see the pattern. Two times four, which is eight, minus three is five. When you plug in x equals two and y equals negative one, bracket n is just equal to n. Okay, and so if we look at L of two, negative one, this limit, well, that's just the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n minus one, which is equal to one. And so using this continuous fraction, we have a new way to write one. One is equal to two minus one over two minus one over two minus one over and so forth. I thought that was pretty neat. But let's look at the 
uh, this formula again. So L is equal to X plus Y over L. And let's solve for L. So we don't have to have it as a continuous fraction. Let's just solve for L. Uh, you know, let's multiply both sides by L and bring everything to one side. So L squared minus XL minus Y is equal to zero. So using the quadratic formula, we get L is equal to X plus or minus the square root of X squared plus four Y all over two. And the depends on the context, whether it's gonna be plus or minus. And let's just check if this works. So if we had x equals one and y equals one, we would get one plus or minus, we would just use pluses in this case, one plus four, so square root of five over two, which is the golden ratio. If we were to plug in x equals two and y equals negative one, we get, we should get the answer of one, and we do, we get two plus or minus the square root of four minus four over two, which is, which is one as we expected, right? That's what we had here. And now let me show you something that I found pretty interesting. What if we made this term in here negative? So let's say we did x equals one and y equals negative one. Well then L would be one plus or minus the square root of negative three all over two. So one plus or minus I root three over two, which is equal to E to the pi over three I, or negative pi over three I, depending on uh, if it's plus or minus. And so what, what is this sequence whose ratio converges to this irrational, I mean, it is irrational, but this imaginary number, let's take a look at that sequence. Okay, so again, we start with zero, one. And so what are we gonna do? We're gonna add the previous term and subtract off two. So basically, we're just gonna take the difference. So we get one, take the difference, we get zero, take the difference, negative one, take the difference, negative one, take the difference, zero, one, and so forth. So this sequence here, if you take the ratio of consecutive terms and then take the limit as n goes to infinity. We showed it converges to this value here. It, it doesn't really, it doesn't converge, but that's what the math says. Okay, well, let me know if you like this video. I thought this was pretty interesting at the end. Thanks for watching.